The slow death of Lake Sibaya, one of our most important freshwater lakes, is rapidly drying up. The lake in the Isemangeliso World Heritage Site in northern KwaZulu-Natal is home to the country's second largest population of hippo and crocodiles. For more insight on this, I'm joined by ecology author and researcher Professor Mike Bruton. Mike, very good morning to you. Tell us what's happening at the lake. Why has it got into such a dire state? What happened? Well, thank you for this opportunity. I first visited Lake Sabaya 53 years ago in 1967 as a student researcher on expeditions from um, Rhodes University. And I was based there from 1970 to 1976, full time doing research on the fishes. Um, I think it's important to realize that Sabaya is not only our largest natural freshwater lake, but it's a unique and extremely well studied system. In addition to the large populations of hippos and crocs, um, one third of its fish species are estuarine species living in fresh water. It has a unique fish called Silhouettea sabai, uh, which are uh, named after the lake, and a, a very unusual um, burrowing goby. Now, the water levels have, have plummeted uh, during the last few decades, and the main cause is the overforestation in the Mbazwan and Mansanguenia forest. Uh, plantations, initially of pine, but more recently of eucalyptus. And it's estimated that the, um, the water draw from the water table by these plantations is something like 47 times more than the use by the, the local people. Of course, Sabaya is a vital resource for the people of eastern Mabutland. So it's, it's really bad management that's caused this. It could have been predicted, um, and now we've got to take dramatic action and, and ha adopt a completely different mindset. Okay, Mike, I mean, what opinion, are we looking at? Excuse me, jumping in here. What are we looking at if it continues at this trajectory? Well, you know, the plummeting lake levels of Sabaya are just a symptom of a much broader problem, and that is the water table uh, uh, going down substantially in that part of Maputland with the risk of, of marine water intrusion once the water level goes down uh, below the sea level. And that could have massive repercussions for the plant and, and animal life um, of eastern Maputland and, of course, the people who depend on it. So it's much, you know, the loss of Lake Sabaya would be a tragedy, but there's an even greater tragedy uh, waiting to happen. And it can be averted if we quickly reverse the situation of overforestation and eventually phase out, in my opinion, the eucalyptus um, plantations in that area. Because the eucalyptus are being um, chopped down or cut down to make pulp uh, for cellulose fiber, which most of which is exported. And that's okay, something Mike, that can so, be done elsewhere. Okay, you say that this can be stopped. We can save the lake. But how do you get the balance then between giving providing an economy to the communities that rely on possibly these eucalyptus trees, possibly on what's doing extreme damage to the lake. How do you balance that? Well, absolutely. This has always been my approach, conservation as if people mattered. And there are many other long-term and sustainable uses that one could put to that highly biodiverse environment in Maputland than the monoculture of two exotic trees. One needs to plan it around the, um, the assets, the biotic assets of that area, which are as rich as that of the Kruger Park, if not richer because of the marine coastline. So we've just got to rethink how can the local pen people benefit more from restoring the natural ecology, getting rid of the monocultivation of, of two species of trees, and, and looking at long-term sustainable solutions. And I definitely think it's achievable, but it will require a considerable change of mindset from the authorities. Okay, Mike Bruton, good to talk to you. We're going to be keeping our eye on this, and thanks for your good work in highlighting the problems here. Let's find